We've got a boat that flies across the water. We've got a boat that flies across the sea. You know this boat, it sailed from Alter. So we're just picking up the new boat, and uh, I've got David here who's going to uh, give us a bit of a rundown on what we need to know. Um, with this, it's more so if you've got kids in the boat or something like that, just be very careful. Like, don't let them, if the motor's not running, just knock back and forth a lot on the, on the gear shift, because it can actually get stuck. It's designed to be sort of putting the gear more when the motor's running and so forth. It's fine, it's, it's not the end of the world if it does go in, but not, don't just like back and forth like that. So, what you'll find too, it'll only start in a neutral position, it's got a, it's got a knock off. So, if you go, I always just and you can try and look after my shoulders before I ever start it, always sort of just pull it slowly a little bit like that just to make sure that's, or you can just check that it's in neutral first because it won't start if it's, like if you've been driving along in forwards and shut it down obviously you'll go to start it again and if you go to rip it like that you'll end up hurting or something, so just check either it's in neutral or just give it a little slow pull before you really give it to it Okay. Um, the fuel line plugs in just to there, and that's just a little dust cover so when you're travelling and Stuff like that, just pop that back on there. There is a warning indicator light there. So pretty much the only time you probably see that come on, it's just um, if you hold it like, you know, with no load on it, wide open throttle, when it hits a rev limiter. So that's your warning light there. Um, you've got a, a lock there, a pivot lock. So that's, that will just sort of adjust that tension you want there. And obviously when you're traveling and things like that, already if you need to lock it off, um, yeah, just push that right over as such. Yeah, this one's very important here. So when you're actually taking the motor off and you're ever laying it down, 100% always has to go with the Like, just think of those like feet. Mm -hmm. It has to lay that side down. If it lays the other side, you can leak oil and things yeah. like that. So that's very important. There is a sticker over here. Like, easy to see those, but there is a sticker over here saying this side up as well. Um, this is just your your trim down here so you can lift the motor up and down depending on you know how much weight you've got in the boat but yeah so you can adjust your trim to do that you just put that spring forward just sort of in on that side and just try not to drop it in the water if you do it at the time and just do it so second or third hole is usually pretty good around there it's on the second at the moment you can fine tune that as, as you need to um, with this one here like when you when you actually put this on the boat always don't have to, but I always get in the habit of putting it, like having some zip ties on board as well. So when you actually, if you're putting it on and off and things like that, like tighten it up and then put a zip tie on it, just sort of stops it from, yeah, it's sort of undoing itself, it vibrates. When you do first put it on the boat and start using the boat until it sort of beds in and that type of thing, just once you tighten up, definitely check it after you've been going for the while. Just even for the first like two or three uses, just sort of really, because the, the aluminium can just push in a little bit and you don't want it to sort of pull it off and fall in. Um, outside, uh, we'll obviously look after, or whoever's doing the servicing, um, look after the car and things like that, but it's not really much you have to worry about down here. There's no, there's no trim tab on it here or anything like that, so it's just pretty much set and go. There are sacrificial anodes down here, so if you were to leave the boat in a marina and sort of bulky or something like that, it's obviously going to take those out before it does any damage to the motor. Um, starting it, um, when you do start, again, probably doing things upside down and back to front, like in order, but um, it's when you do start the boat, kill switch has to be in, or start the motor I should say, kill switch has to be in there. You can actually shut it down by pushing on the button there quite firm or just pull the kill switch out and starting it because it is fuel injected. It's not like the old two strikes where you've got to rev them and that sort of thing to start it. Just make sure it's actually in that position. Not, not like, don't, you don't need to start it with throttle okay. but such. So you can just see, see that there. So no choke, it's fuel injected. So it's just pretty much. Um, if you haven't run it for a while, it's, it's not unusual to take two or three pulls just to get the fuel through enough to get it get things firing. So, but it's uh, I've just had it run up on like it was up on the shed for us, so it's run it again. It was run when we pre-delivered it, but I just ran it up again today. So it's got fuel and a filter ready to go and that type of thing. Uh, inside here, so just a little catch on the back here. Actually, while we're talking about the catch on the back here. Um, what we've been sort of asked to say to you as well is see down here what we're finding is some people are sort of pushing on this to 
to lift the motor yeah. up and that sort of thing. Yep. That's not really designed to push like push really push that up. So you can't like yeah if you use that like you can just put your hand there and and it's use but but don't just push it down there. Yeah. When you need to tilt the motor up and then that's just you you get locked there so you can disengage it so you can actually tilt it up and so forth in the travel position. Um, Taking this off. There's not really a lot you're going to have to worry about under here. So over here, this is this is probably one of the things you keep an eye on here. That's just your fuel, like that old little water indicator. So it's got a little red ring. Yeah. It can sort of, in use, just wobble around. And if it looks like it's kicked up, just give a little tap. It does actually come off on some little rubber brackets there. It does slide off if you need to move around a bit more but usually just give a little tap like that and it's enough just to seat it back down but if you notice that's up obviously you've got water in the bottom of the filter there just slide that off pull it out undo the bottom screw there when you do it back up don't over tighten it either because you can sort of chew out the layering there so just just firm enough that it's not leaking again and pop that back in so just yeah water fuel water filter there um, that's your oil fill there, like these things, they're pretty good, they don't use oil and that sort of thing. Um, but that is your oil fill there, and your dipstick level there, just okay. got your two, two rings there, so it should stay within that range. And that's pretty much it. we are just giving it a bit of a spray down. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You don't want to put too much on, you know, the dripping, just, just a bit of a dusting really more than anything. Just keeps everything going so the service for that type of thing. Um, just trying to think what else I can let you know about now. That's pretty much. Have you got any questions and such? They're pretty simple little things. You just it's just things like the main things, the important ones are like when you lay it down, yeah, put it on the feet as well. That is you just use the to put it Uh yeah, so flushing it down the bottom just normal earmuffs and just down on here. Yeah. And then you don't like that water, obviously. You have the water running before you actually start it. And then, yeah, turn the motor off and then take the water out. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much the long and short of it. I don't think there's anyone else. Um, yeah, that, that first service is pretty important just to swap the oils out after it's sort of just run in. So when it's we, we look after that too if you want to. Yeah. So when it's travelling on the back, do you have um, a, a stick that holds it out and support or...? Uh, you probably could do it. We, I oh know Tim reckons with those smaller trailers, you try and do too many Ks with them on, on these trailers, especially with, if you're going to do bigger Ks, I don't know how the setup exactly is you're doing and so forth, but if you can get the motor off the boat... What's your best setup? Well, a lot of people seen? that run these loaders are usually running like canopies. And I'll have like a like a trolley like that essentially, but it's the it's the same brand as this, and they pop it up in their canopy. So that's the car you're going to yeah, be running. So what moment, are you going to do with the motor as such? At the moment, it's just going to be lying down in the back. Yeah. Okay. Right. Unless we come up with a better plan. Yeah. The rack people. If we yeah. could rack it onto the caravan or something. So, yeah, I know there are. Um, the guy came. He got, had a 30 horsepower. And he did actually have a rack filled up off the back of the caravan. And he also, what he had, is a little crane. Because these aren't, they're not that heavy, but they're awkward sort of heavy, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, like, twisting and turning and that. Like, it's not bad just to lift up, but if you're moving it around, so if that becomes an issue, yeah, he had just a little davit crane on the back. You could just, like, drop in on the back, and he just had a bracket, like a solid little bracket, a little timber on it there, and he just bolted it onto the back of his... Caravan. Obviously, check legalities with that, with adding things to the back of your van and stuff. I can't comment on that side of things, but um, but that's probably not a bad way to store your motor. I'd say you probably don't really want it in your car all the time. That'd get pretty awkward, I imagine. Yeah, back of the van is probably a good one. I'd say. Have you got any like storage slots in the side of your van? Do you think it's, at the moment, it's got a, a big uh, slide out. Barbecue. Barbecue. Oh, yeah. about getting rid of that, that and it's got the rails that you slide it in and out. Yeah, because mm. the brackets, like, the brackets like, go in, like, they put them in just this way and it can lay down that way. It just can't lay down that, yeah. that side there. 
lifting them pretty much. Just, um, yeah, they just lift them up, slide them in, yeah. pull it out, wheel it over to wherever you're going. Yeah, the that's guys doing the racks for you, if that's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah that's what we're doing. They, they see it every day, yeah. man, yeah. So. Thank yeah. you very much, Dave. That's all right. That's all right. One more really important point. <laughs> if you end up using a little uh, dabit, um little hook on the end of the back of your van or something to lift it up and off the bracket, that's where you can hook it onto there and that'll lift the weight of the motor. So that's it just there. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. You know this boat, it sailed from Aotearoa. It stays afloat. Cause it's carried by Kiwis We're coming to the end as we round the bend The sky's getting dark as we near the mark Slip and slide, bounce to the other side Kiwis sail away Come on! <laughs> when they connect but it's not too far It's time to show the world just Ah, so we've got a little dip sounder bracket there if needed Three bung holes Three bungs Got a boat that flies across the sea. You know this boat, it sailed from Aotearoa. It stays afloat, cause it's carried by Kiwis. We got a boat that flies across the water. We got a boat that flies across the sea. You know this boat, it sailed from Aotearoa. It stays afloat. Because it's carried by Kiwi. I ain't rich, but I damn sure wanna be. Working like a dog all day ain't working for me. I wish I had a rich uncle that'd kick the bucket And I was sitting on a pile like a warren But I know everybody says Money can't buy happiness But it can buy me a boat It can buy me a truck to pull So we goofed a little bit because uh, we didn't realise the topper was going to be so big We thought the majority of the racks was going to be put on by the racks galore um, so we're just going to measure it up to make sure when we come back we can um, get it right. Thanks, Dave. No worries. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we bought the new boat yesterday, but now we've got to put the old one on the market. It's a bit sad uh, to see her go. She's been a fantastic model. Uh, but now we've got this one. So it can go on the roof and go down Australia with us. We've got the roof topper hooked in to go on to the Land Cruiser so that we can hook up the caravan, the car, the boat and go. So, but it can buy me a boat.